Hello, welcome to another lesson. In this lesson, we're going to multiply decimals using numbers up to 100. The first problem on the screen is 4.3 times 2.3. We're going to set this up by first writing the first factor, 4.3, and then the second factor, 2.3 below it. Now, when I have decimals, I don't necessarily end up with my decimals lined up. The way I set up these problems is I look at the digit furthest to the right in both factors. As a reminder, a factor is the number, or the num they are the numbers that you multiply together in a multiplication problem. So my factors are 4.3 and 2.3. So I look at the digit furthest to the right in each factor and those are the digits that I line up. Now in this particular problem, because there's only one decimal place in each factor, my decimals just so happen to line up as well. That will not always be the case though. Now, I go ahead and multiply but I ignore the decimals for now. I just sort of imagine that the problem is 43 times 23 and that there aren't any decimals there. I'm going to deal with the decimals at the very end. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 4 is 12. I put in a 0 as my placeholder. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. And now I add to get 9 8 and 9. Now this is where the decimal comes in. I go back up to the original problem and I count up the total number of decimal places in my two factors. There's one in this factor and one in this factor. So there's two total decimal places. Then I go back down to my answer and I go to the very end of it, to the far right. And starting there, I'm going to move, in this case, one, two places and put the decimal in. I moved two places because there were two total decimal places up here. Had there been three, I would have moved three places. Had there been one, I would have only moved one place, and so forth. So my answer is 9.89. However, look at our instructions. Round to one decimal place. So there's one more step I need to take here in this particular problem. I'm rounding to this decimal place, to the tenths place. In order to do that, I look one to the right, and if this number here in the hundredths place is five or larger, I round up. If this were four or smaller, I would round down. Well, nine is clearly bigger than five, so this rounds up to nine. So nine point nine is going to be my answer. Let's close our scratch pad and see if that's correct. Sure is. Okay, now this problem's a little bit different. In this case, we only know one of the two factors. We know 2.8, but we don't know what the other factor is. However, we do know the product. The product is the special name for the answer to a multiplication problem. Now let's just pretend for a moment that this were actually that it said this. Let's pretend that that 11.8 were a 12 and this 2.8 were a 3 and the unknown number is still the unknown. We can do this pretty easily in our head. 3 times what is 12? Well, 3 times 4 is 12. What we actually did there was we took the product of 12 and we divided it by the factor we know, which is the 3, to get the factor that we didn't know, which is 4. So that's the same thing that we're going to do here. We're going to take the product, 11.8, and we're going to divide it by the factor we know, 2.8, to get the factor we don't know. So 11.8 divided by 2.8. Now, we have a decimal here in our divisor, 
as a reminder in a division problem, the number on the outside of the division symbol is the divisor. The one on the inside is the dividend. Whenever we have a decimal in our divisor, we have to move that decimal to the end of the number. So in this case, it moves over one place, and we put it right there. So now, instead of saying 2.8, this says 28. And however many places we move it in our divisor, we have to move it the same number of places in our dividend. So we moved it once, so we're going to take this and we're going to also move it once. And we always move everything over toward the right. So now this, instead of saying 11.8, it says 118. And I'm going to bring that decimal straight up. And I'll go ahead and extend this. We're going to need, end up needing a little more space for our decimal places. Now, the problem says 118 divided by 28. 28 doesn't go into 1. It doesn't go into 11. It does go into 118. And I can estimate 28 at 25. 25 goes into 100 four times. So 4 is probably a pretty safe bet. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 3 is 11. 8 minus 2 is 6. And then 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. Now, we are supposed to round to one decimal place. Remember in the last problem, that means that we actually have to go out two decimal places because that second decimal place or the hundredths place will tell us if we round up or down. So I actually need to keep going with this problem. Well, how do I do that? Well, I can actually continue to add zeros because remember the decimal is right here. This says 118. Adding a zero after that whole number doesn't change the value. Now I have a zero that I can bring down. 28 goes into 60 how many times? Well, 28 is pretty close to 30. 30 would go into 60 twice. So 2 is a pretty good guess. 2 times 8 is 16. And 2 times 2 is 4, plus that 1 is 5. And I'm going to subtract 60 minus 56 is 4. Now remember, I need to go out one more decimal place, because I need to know if I, this is going to stay 2 or if it's going to round up to 3. So I can just keep adding zeros. And now I have a 0 that I can bring down. 28 goes into 40 one time. 1 times 28 is 28. And I actually don't even really need to subtract at this point. I have enough information here to know how to round, but we'll go ahead and do it anyways. 40 minus 28 is equal to 12. Okay, so I have 4.21. Well, 1 is less than 4, so this rounds down to 4.2. Let's close our scratch pad and we'll put 4.2 in as our answer and we got it right. Okay, here's another one that's like the one that we just did where we know the product and we know one of the two factors. So we'll take our product, 15.1 and we'll divide by the factor that we know, 2.4. Again, we have to take that decimal in the divisor and we move it to the end. So now that is 24. We moved it one place, so we're going to move this one place. And I'm going to extend this because we'll have some decimals to deal with. And I bring that straight up. So now the problem says 151 divided by 24. Okay, 24 does not go into 1. It doesn't go into 15. It will go into 151. 24 is very close to 25, and 151 is very close to 150. I know that 25 would go into 156 times, so I'm going to make an educated guess that 6 is going to go up there in my whole number place. 
two times, or excuse me, six times four is 24. Six times two is 12, plus two is 14. I subtract, I'm going to need to borrow here, make that a four. 11 minus four is seven. And I do my sevens with a little line across them. Four minus four is zero. One minus one is zero. Now, just like we did in the last problem, we need to add a zero and bring that zero down because we need to create some decimal places here. So 24 goes into 70 twice. Two times four is eight. Two times two is four. I subtract six, and that becomes a 10, 22. And now I'm going to add another zero and bring that down. And 24 goes into 220 how many times? Well, again, I can estimate this as 25. 25 would go in to 200 eight times. So I actually, at this point, can just stop with my problem if I want. I know that this 24 is going to go into this at least eight times, maybe nine times. Either way, that number is bigger than five, isn't it? So whatever goes right here, is for sure bigger than five. That tells me that this is going to round up. And so my answer to one decimal place is 6.3. Let's go ahead and try that out. And there we go, we have another one correct. Okay, this keeps giving us these problems where we know just one of the factors and we don't know the other. So we'll set it up like we did our last 25.1 divided by 8.1. Move that decimal over one, move this decimal over one, bring the decimal up, give ourselves a little more room. 81 does not go into two, doesn't go into 25. How many times does it go into 251? Well, I can do some estimating here. 80 or 81 is close to 80. This is pretty close to 240. I know that 80 would go into 240 three times, so I'm going to try that. So three times one is three. Three times eight is 24. is 4, 11 minus 3 is 8, 4 minus 4 is 0, 2 minus 2 is 0, and that worked out. Remember, whatever our remainder here is, it always needs to be smaller than our divisor. If we had gotten a number that was bigger, we know that it would go in more times. Now, same as we did the last time. We add a zero and bring it down. Oh, 81 does not go into 80. So it goes in there zero times. Don't forget to put that zero in. Sometimes students forget to do that. Now we'll do zero times 81. That's just zero. So when we subtract, we just stay with 80. And we add another zero and bring it down. 81 goes into 800. Okay, well, we know that 80 would go into 800 10 times. So 81 must go in there nine times. Nine times one is nine. Nine times eight is 72. And again, we really don't even need to bother finishing the problem at this point because we already know that this is bigger than 5. Therefore, 
the zero is going to round up to one and our answer will be 3.1. So let's close our scratch pad and try 3.1 and see if that's correct.